Okay, so you guys are in for a treat. Question 17, obviously, it brings into it some of the identity theorems that we looked at in Chapter 9 in Year 11. Now, any time that we have an identity theorem, I love it. I think it turns it from being like a math thing into like a puzzle, which is always fun. So here we go. A. Uh, here we can see we've got x in terms of cos and we've got y in terms of sine. So if I look over here at our identities, I'm trying to look for something that can match those together. So if I can get a sine squared and a cos squared, I can get it to equal 1. So in order to get that to look similar, all I need to do is square each term. So if I square the x term and I square the cos term, I square the y term and I square the sine term. That means now I can do equation 1 plus equation 2. That will give me x squared plus y squared equals cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. Uh, and then I can match that to this, which means that it's actually equal to 1. So x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So if you do that, um, just remember that that is the equation of a circle. All right, next. So we're going to be doing the same thing again, except now we've got numbers out the front. So let's see how this interacts. So again, I'm going to start by squaring each of the functions. Uh, now when I square this one, I square both parts of it because it follows the index law where if I have something like this and I square it, it will square the power of a and the power of b. So that's why it becomes 9 cos squared theta plus, oh, and then y squared will be equal to 25 sine squared theta. Look at that, bloody beautiful. All right, so now I'm going to do equation 1 plus equation 2. Equation 1 will be x squared plus y squared is going to be equal to 9 cos squared theta. Actually, there was one other step that we forgot to do before we moved on. I don't quite have it in the cos squared theta and the sine squared theta on its own yet. The problem that I've got is this one's got a 25 and this one's got a 9. Now, if I do this in the step after, it's just going to get messy. It's a lot easier to take this 9 across now. Look at that. Oh, so fancy. And I take this 25 and I'm going to move that across now as well. Oh, so fancy. So now when I add equation 1, x squared over 9, and I add equation 2, y squared over 25, uh, is going to be equal to cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. I've got this, I've got this. All I have to do now is cancel this down to being 1. So it'll be x squared over 9 plus y squared over 25 is equal to 1. Now that's actually the equation for an ellipse style function uh, where it's going to pass through the center at 0, 0. Whereas this one is a circle that passes through 0, 0 with a radius of 1. So, yeah, pretty, pretty fancy, pretty stylish. Let's keep going. Escape. Okay, so next one we're going to be doing is we're going to be using our sec function. So c is going to be equal to x is equal to 2 sec theta. Y is going to be equal to 3 tan theta. Oh, so fancy. So now I want to look for one of my double angle or one of my Pythagorean identities that has sec and it has tan. So if I manipulate this formula by moving tan to the other side, I'll have sec squared a minus tan squared a is equal to 1. So that's another fact that I can use. See how it becomes like matchy-matchy? It's the best part of this whole thing. Okay, so let's adjust our formulas so that they are what we want them to be. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to square each of them. Now I'm going to move the 9 to the other side. I'm going to move the 4 to the other side. Same reason before. Like I said, you'd still get the same answer if you carried through with what I was going to do. It just takes longer. It's like four extra steps to do some cancelling in your fractions. All right, so here we are. Now 
the difference between this one was to get it to match the Pythagorean identity, I need to do this one minus that one. So this time it's going to be equation one minus equation two. Oh, so fancy. Okay, so x squared over four minus this time minus y squared over nine is equal to sec squared theta minus tan squared theta, oh my god, equals 1, so fancy, x squared over 4 minus y squared over 9. So that would be my final answer for that one. Let's look up at D. Now D is going to be slightly different because we've got this 2 in front, meaning that we're going to need to adjust it using one of these formula here, our double angle formulas. So let's start by writing D down here. Okay, so looking at my double angle formulas, I'm going to be thinking about what I can do in terms of replacing. Now, I do see that I've got a formula there that's going to be cos 2a is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Now, remember, I want to be getting it in terms of x and y. So currently, this could be a y, but I can change x so it matches that. So if I square the x component and I change this into its double angle identity, now I can say that this is no longer that. So therefore, y is going to be equal to 1 minus 2x squared because I can replace this part that I just circled with x squared from over here and that will be my final answer.